Hello and welcome to my sewing room. This is Joe from Joe's Country Junction and I have gotten lots of requests for more Sew with Joe videos and I kind of thought about shooting one today but then I thought well I don't really want to do my hair. I don't really want to clean my sewing room. I just really want to sew. So um, what I decided to do is do it a naturel. So this is just me on a Saturday and this is how I look on a Saturday. I don't have my hair fixed. I don't have any makeup. I don't have any of those kind of things. So if you want to sew with me, feel free to join me. And if the natural me isn't you, so you can move on to another video. So this is just me today and um, I have to keep sewing because I have important things to do. Let me turn the camera around and show you. So this is the quilt I'm working on, kind of. Say hi to Izzy. Izzy's there. Hey, Izzy, say hi. There's Izzy. Look at her. She thinks she's going to get a treat, but she's not. Because i got to keep showing you what's going on here. So my grandson, Carver, he's way down here on the bottom with his little footprint or with his little handprints. Um, he has a project at school and what's happening is the class needs to make a quilt for a fundraiser um, that helps school. So each of the classes at the school are encouraged to make a quilt and not, not a quilt, make a project that can be auctioned off at the fundraiser and they call it the gala. So they have a big uh, catered meal, they have silent auctions, they have live auctions. And so this quilt will go on the live auction and this is the quilt for Carver's class. And so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it first. Um, these are uh, the inside right here. This is 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Um, I will put a link down below to show you the paint that they used for their hand prints. And so what happened is I cut these 12 by 12 and a half inch blocks. I took them to Calissa's house and gave them to Carver. Carver took them to school. Carver gave them to his friend and his friend's mom has a cricket and she went through and printed all of the names onto the pieces of fabric. And then he brought them back to school. Then Calissa, my daughter, and another one of the moms in the class uh, went to school and helped the kids all make their handprints. And their handprints, they got to choose two colors and then they had to put their handprints onto the piece of fabric. Well, then the, then the quilt squares all came back to me and I put a border on each block. So each block has a 12 and a half inch strip on the side and a 14 and a half inch strip across the top. So you'd need two 12 and a half inch strips and two 14 and a half inch strips in order to make the quilt, um, the quilt blocks. And then the sashing here, this is cut two and a half inches wide. So these are 14 and a half inch strips. Um, and then being that there's an odd number of kids in the class, I had to add some filler blocks over here to fill in the space so that the blocks could be um, set like this. So these are eight and three fourths inches, the block that's right here, eight and three fourths inches by 14 and a half. Just in case you are ever a grandma or a mom or um, someone who loves a grandma and wants to make a quilt for them, then you know um, the dimensions of the quilt that I'm making here today and you can make your own handprint quilt. The problem is, is that there's two sections of kids in Carver's class. Uh, so at, at the school he goes to, he's in kindergarten and there's two kindergarten classes. Well, the other section of his class didn't have someone to make a project. And so they asked if I would just make another quilt for the other class. So I am. So I have this quilt done and we I have to make another one. So why don't you come along and join me as I start making it. Um, this one has a better number. I think I have 20 blocks for that one. This quilt only, there's a total of 17 blocks because there's more blocks hidden, another row of blocks hidden in the backside of 
this quilt. And I just used up any kind of color of solid print scraps that I had. And Calissa picked out this um, swirly background fabric. We didn't want something specifically boyish or girlish. And we thought this way, this would be a pretty good idea and way to make a quilt. So I'm going to switch the camera around. I'm going to take you to my sewing machine. And we're just going to put the borders onto the blocks. And that's probably all we're going to have time to do today because I have... Um, even more stuff to do and I have to do some of the cutting. So off we go. I'll be right back. Okay. I think I'm back and I think I have everything set up. So, um, I'm at my machine. I'm sewing on my Faf 1200 hobby machine. Um, and it's my very favorite machine. It only stitches straight stitch. That's the only problem about it, but I really only ever use straight stitch. So it's not a problem. One of the things that's going to be hard for me today is in order to get that camera lighting right for you, the camera lighting, lighting, the sewing lighting has to be a little bit wrong for me because see if I turn my light on, then that's what happens. So I'm just going to do the best I can. And um, it is currently close to six o'clock in the evening. So I don't know what's going to happen with the lighting and how long we'll be able to do this, but let's hang out for a little bit. Uh, I already have a couple of the blocks done for the class. So this is one for Dylan. And again, the inside here is 12 and a half inches. These sides here you need to cut at 12 and a half inches and they're one and a half inches wide. Across the top, you'll need two pieces for the top and bottom that are one and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. And so as I'm sewing this, I have to tell you something. Um, I was just cutting fast and trying to do this because I am, um, today is March 4th as I'm filming this and I was given this stuff. So today's a Saturday. I was given this stuff like, I think Tuesday and, um, it's been a big back and forth because I immediately started sewing. No, I think I was given it Monday night. So Monday night I got it. And, but I didn't get all of the pieces. So I started sewing Monday night and Tuesday I got the rest of the pieces. So I sewed the quilts together on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Carver took it to school and like Thursday I got it back. And Friday I loaded it onto the machine and started, I got about half of the long arm quilting done. And now today's Saturday and the quilt that you've already seen, I finished doing the long arming on that and then I did the binding on it. I do use machine binding so it didn't take me too long and um, I have a video for that and we'll put a link below. I'll try to remember and put a link below so that you can see how I machine bind if you haven't done machine binding before or are curious about that. So this other quilt I need to get done as well because I believe the gala is on the 17th. And as I said, today's the 4th. So this top, once I get this top done, the top has to go to school. The teacher has to approve it to make sure all of the names are spelled right. And we didn't forget any kids or that everything's okay. And then I'll get that quilt top back and then I'll have to long arm it and bind it. I think I can get it all done because we do have until the 17th, but time is marching on and being time is marching on, I need to march my little feet along too. So um, I already have three blocks done because I just wanted to show you how they look. Um, what I've been doing is I've been trying to, sometimes I coordinate the borders with the hand prints, sometimes I don't. In this case, I have strips over here um, that I've already cut, strip sets that I've already cut, and there really wasn't a good one to put with this because I didn't have really red and I didn't really have blue. So I just opted to put green on there, just something that doesn't even coordinate. And that's okay because it'll look all just fine in the quilt. And um, this is the teacher. Again, I just did something that was different. Uh, the name of our school is Turkey Valley Trojans. And so the mom that used her Cricut, she used her Cricut and printed this out as well. So it says Turkey Valley, and he happens to be the class of 2035. Oh my goodness, can you believe 2035? That just seems like so far off, but that's what he is, the class of 2035. So that's what's on there, and that's what um, 
I'm working on. Uh, so I did tell my daughter, I said, um, Calissa, because she's the mom of Carver, my grandson. Uh, I said to her, you have more kids coming up in school and we'll probably have to do some kind of project like this again mm -hmm. because no one else will probably volunteer to do a project like this again. So if we're going to do this for a project again, when your next son, Gannon, is in this age, that is not my belly. That's my dogs. They're right down here wrestling around um, while I'm trying to shoot this video. I, but I said to Calissa, I said, we are starting this in December, so I don't feel like such a rush because who wants to make two quilts in basically, well, three weeks probably is what I have. That what I've had is, yeah, because it's been three weeks. It's It's been about 21 days since I've got all of this. And so that's that'd be really close to three weeks. So anyway, who wants to do this in three weeks? So I surely don't, but um, here I am, so we need to get going on it. Um, when you watch me, this is a new girl in the class. We had to wait for her block because she didn't even start school yet. Hey, dogs, no, no. So I have to tell you something. When I cut these, I didn't test a block or do anything else. I just said, hey, Kelly, what size do I need to cut these? And Kelly told me what size to cut them, but she told me... 15 inches instead of 14 inches and 15 inches is the wrong number. So when I sew these, I'm going to have to trim a little bit off the blocks, but you won't have to do that. But it was one of those things. If I was going to film a video today, you're just going to have to go with things the way they are. I um, just have this one sitting right on top, this pink color. And I think I'm just going to put pink right on this because I don't want to put a pink on a boy's block later. So I'm just going to put the pink on this block now. And um, everything set up. I have a little uh, travel iron over here that I'll just do a quick ironing when we need to do that. But for now, we're just sewing along. Um, I'm going to grab the next block to do um, this one. Looks like this, and I think we'll just grab uh, this teal color and put that on there. I need to thank a blog reader. I believe it was <laughs> Connie at one point. <laughs> Gave me a batch of uh, or, uh, part of a bolt of white fabric, and that is what I used on all of these blocks. And I was super thankful to have that because, of course, there's not a lot of money to make the quilt top and make the project. So people, it has to pretty much come from donations. So I have donated. <laughs> has donated the white fabric. Uh, you might see here on the end, I have a little leader and ender going on. I have a stack of these right here and every once in a while, I'll, if I need to cut my thread, I'll just throw one of those in there. So I got the, well, Connie got the white fabric that we needed and then I had the, I might not have um, taken me so long to cut it out, but I just, I went through all of my solids that I had and everything that was like um, a quarter yard, I just cut it up and used it for these borders because I thought that would be a great way to uh, use that fabric up and it would give some good variety because of the black swirly fabric that I showed you was in the quilt. This quilt was gonna have the same black swirly fabric and um, that I had said pre earlier, previously, I said that we wanted a fabric that wasn't very boy or very, very girly. And this fabric was perfect for that. And it was perfect that I had the solid print scraps as well. So here we go. We're going to, I have the side borders on this one. 
And then now I'm going to add the top and bottom borders. When I was at the long arm, I debated for a while. I think I need to adjust my camera. It seems to be just sloping down a little bit. Sorry. Um, as I was doing the long arming on this quilt, I was a little bit um, apprehensive. I wasn't really sure if I should run over the handprints. Should I not run over the handprints? I just didn't know what to do or what would be the best idea. So what I ended up doing is I kind of went all the way around the handprints and then kind of just did a swirl in between um, this area right here. I do a loop over here and a loop over here. And But I didn't really go over the names and I didn't really go over the handprint. Part of that was I didn't know how the machine would take the paint and if that would cause the needle to break or the thread to break. And I, as I said, I'm in a hurry to make these. So I didn't want to deal with that. In the past, I have long armed a different handprint quilt where the handprints were done with paint. And when I did that one, I wasn't, oh, it was a miserable experience. Every time I would go over the paint area, the thread would break. And mostly that was because the paint was really heavy and thick. And in this quilt, they used a different kind of paint that the paint, oh, it, it just goes onto the fabric beautifully and it is not heavy and it's not thick. I think even if I would have decided to go over the paint with my long arm, I don't think the needle would have broke and I don't think the thread would have broke. Because the paint is very uh, pliable and I mean, I just do this and it, it's not thick. It's There's no problem with it. So I'm super excited about that. And pretty soon we're going to have two blocks done. So I have three done before and I have two here. So we'll be done to, we'll have five done. My goal for today is to get the blocks for this done. And then after I have the blocks done, okay, again, I'm trimming this off, but if you make blocks like this, you won't have to trim that off because you're gonna cut yours out at 14 and a half inches uh, the first time around and not be like me and accidentally cut them at 15 inches. Okay, so I got one side. Okay, so this one is all pressed and ready to go into the quilt. So that's good. Uh, some of you are probably going to ask me the hows or whys or what's of how I laid the quilt out. And I, I really didn't do anything. I didn't lay them out on the ground first. I know a lot of people are on the floor first or on a design wall first. I know a lot of people do, but I just don't. I'm... I'm all about speed for this project because I really do want to get it done. And I'm somebody that um, I kind of will get anxious if I have big deadlines and I usually I usually work pretty hard so that the deadlines don't uh, I don't know don't drive me too crazy. So I want to work a, a little bit ahead. Um, oh no, look at this block. It's crooked across the top. I'm going to set that one aside and figure out what I'm going to do with that because that might have to be squared up or something in order to make the quilt work. I don't know. That stinks. So I'm going to put all of that for that block over there. And I'm going to do this one in yellow. Okay. I don't know why that block is like that. Hopefully I can work.
work around that and that doesn't slow down the process here. So I'm going to run this one through. I've never come up with a great method for um, keeping colors separated while I work on another block uh, because it, I have to use two strips and then I have to save the other strips aside. And uh, I don't know how, always how to keep those other two aside so that they stay where they're supposed to be and I don't lose them. So we're almost done with one more block. It doesn't take very long at all to do these blocks and I really appreciate that. Um, so here's my next block. I had someone ask about my iron and this, it, all it says is a white travel mate. Let me turn it here, it's hot so I don't wanna burn myself. But it says white and it says travel mate on it. I don't know anything about the iron because it was gifted to me by a blog reader. Uh, they weren't using it anymore and just passed it on to me and I have kind of adopted it as my little side iron. Goodness knows I'm not a traveler and if it was up to me to travel in order to use it, it would probably never have gotten used because I don't travel. <laughs> Um, I live in Iowa, and as far as I travel is typically uh, to Minnesota to see relatives or about two hours south to see my family that lives that direction. So I have family that lives two hours north in Minnesota, kind of north and, and uh, west of me, and I have family that lives pretty much straight south of me about two hours away. Okay, I'm gonna get this one ironed. It's not very exciting sewing to do, but sometimes easy sewing is really nice to be able to do and not something that I have to think too hard about. Okay, these pieces are stuck, there we go. You all are lucky. I was listening to a podcast series uh, about, uh, it's called Paper Ghost Season 3, and it's a crime mystery, or they take a crime investigation, and they try to shed some light on the crime. And so they were doing that, and the case is a case that happened quite some time ago in Iowa. And so I don't ever remember what happened with the case. I don't remember if it was ever solved. And so it's kind of nice to, I kind of like listening to some of those that I don't know what happened in the case, but yet it was kind of local to me, being it was in Iowa. I, I uh, end up listening to quite a little true crime. And it's not that I like to, oh... I don't want to, Some, somewhere I, I heard somebody say about true crime and people that listen to true crime, true crime that that's a little bit morbid. And in a way, it kind of is, but also in a way, I just like to know how the police system works. I like to know um, what is in the mind of people that commit such terrible crimes. I don't know, but part of me almost feels guilty for wanting to listen to that. I don't know. But I've, for some reason, I've always been attracted to shows like Dateline and uh, 48 Hours and all those kind of shows. I just always have been, and I don't... 2020... 
ever since those shows came on, I've always been kind of attracted to them just because I can never believe that crimes like that can happen. But again, I feel kind of, I don't know, kind of weird for liking them. This is, is that, I don't, I don't mean I like it either. I just, uh, I guess I feel kind of weird for listening sometimes. But okay, I think we almost have another one done. And this little boy, his name is Bryson, and he's going to have his block done with orange. When Calissa went to school to do these, it was kind of unusual. I was talking to her and I said, well, I suppose all the girls picked pink and purple and all the boys picked blue and green. And she said, actually, no, mom. She said a lot of kids pick this color right here. I don't know if it's gold or what, but um, that's the color that most of the, that a lot of the kids picked. So yeah, that just kind of surprised me because I figured it, uh, every time I do childcare, it seems like the, see, coming up next, here's another one that picked that color. So whenever I, whenever I, I previously was a childcare provider and in my child care provider life, it seems like the boys always picked the blue and the green and the girls always picked pink and purple. So I think I'm going to do this next one in orange. Because it's one of those that doesn't really have a color. I don't really have a border color for it because the handprints are blue and green and my, the green I have is a little bit off and the blue I have isn't quite right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if Calissa can, Calissa is my daughter that helps me do some like video editing. She's the youngest in the family. And I'm going to see if she will do some editing so that the finished quilt can be seen and the process can be seen at the same time all in one video. So even though I said that this is March 4th, we probably won't see the video for a little bit because I probably have to have this quilt finished too before we can show the video. Here I got another block done. Yahoo! See, these go really actually quite quick, which I'm very thankful for because, yeah, just because. I spent earlier part of my day, uh, if you're unfamiliar with me and what I do, I... Um, <laughs> a dog foster provider so I get dogs from our rescue group and then I take care of them foster care and uh, much of my day was spent calling references it's a good problem to have because I have a little a little cocker spaniel puppy with me right now and she uh, got 10 applications in. So that means that um, we needed to call 10 vet, vet references. We need to, everybody has two telephone calls to make to call their personal references that they provided. So every application needs a minimum of three phone calls. So 10 applications, three phone calls each. That's 30 phone calls to try to get, um, to find a, the Papa home. And then on top of that, this puppy has some special needs. So after we made those 30 phone calls, then as a group, we got together and um, picked our favorite few. And then we called those, uh, people to see if they were still interested after they found out about her special needs. And so, happily, we had a couple people that were.
were still interested in her, in her after they found out about her special needs. And you, if you're wondering about her special needs, I can tell you about that as well. Um, she was a puppy mill dog and she was um, in a caged puppy mill that doesn't allow their dogs to go outside. And she's four and a half months old. And so she um, has spent four and a half months her entire life in a cage and without a place to exercise. So she was a dog that runs in circles. So at first when I took her outside, you might remember from your childhood tetherball sets. That's, that's the pole on the ground with the volleyball kind of thing on the bottom and you have to hit the ball and the ball goes around the um, pole for to play tetherball. Well, she, when we got outside and she was on a leash, she would wrap me up right around my legs, just like a tetherball. And so we had to eliminate some people, sadly, just because they were in the, like their later seventies and they wanted to adopt a dog and we can't really, uh, we don't want to put her with someone who, you know, might have more of a issue with a tripping hazard. She had never been outside before, so when I got her, we had snow on the ground, and so she had to get used to and understand snow, and then the snow melted, so then she had to get used to grass. Um, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's been challenging. And so now we have her used to grass and snow, but she still doesn't. She's much better, but she didn't completely understand um, how to, what she was supposed to do when she didn't get outside. So she would go outside and then she would just sit because she didn't understand that there was something to do outside. And so we kind of had to go through a little bit of a boot camp here so that she would understand what she was supposed to do when she went outside. So then I had to start kenneling her all the time, which I just felt terrible about. It was kind of like a whole big tough love thing. I had to kennel her and then take her outside. And then if she went to the bathroom outside, she got to run around and play for a while. And if she didn't go to the bathroom outside, she had to go back in her kennel for a little bit. So that was really, oh, I think it was hard on me and hard on her, but she finally figured out how to go to the bathroom outside, which is just awesome because then she was able to get um, approved that she's adaptable. So here's Logan's. Okay. I got another one here. I think we're going to find purple for this one because there's a purple handprint here that would go nice with it. So fostering is different every to every dog I get. It's just been different. And sometimes I get two dogs at a time. Sometimes I get one dog at a time. Um, so it just seems to be a little different. And I'm learning so much. Um, I've never had a dog that has been through as much as this latest one has. So I, I don't know. It's interesting. I want to keep doing it. But... As I said, it is, it can be challenging. Okay, I need to pick another color. I think I'm gonna put purple on this one too. Or let's just go with teal. Teal sounds good. And I haven't done too many teal, I don't think, so we gotta keep a variety of colors. another one through the machine okay I'm gonna trim this edge up and again just remember that if you're making this you won't have to trim those edges because you know to cut them at 14 and a half inches not at 15 inches my plan is tomorrow I kind of got um 
some stuff going on. Uh, if you follow my blog, you know that um, I'm very active. Oh, well, not very active, but I'm active. I'm helping with the fire department. My husband, who has passed away, used to be on the fire department, and I do what I can to support the fire department. And so they have a breakfast coming up as a fundraiser, and I always help work at the breakfast, and I always donate a quilt for it. And so there's a currently a auction on my blog for a quilt that I made that was donated. The pieces were donated by a blog reader, and um, they that quilt got put together and uh, they asked me to auction it off on the blog and so I am and uh, I'm very happy about that. So here's the next block. And here we go with the next. Back to purple. After the breakfast, <laughs> then I have somebody coming to adopt my puppy. And then after my puppy gets adopted, I am going to try to get out and walk the dogs with a friend. And after that, I'm going to try to get this quilt top all put together, which shouldn't be too hard. I'm excited about it and to have it just a little bit further. Oh, this one's going to be iffy. I noticed that this child kind of got their finger over to the edge. And I think I might just barely clip off the edge of her finger which I don't love that but there's nothing I can do about it at this point okay it's kind of fun because as I'm doing these blocks some of these kids I've done child care for at one point in time or some kids you know I know their parents or things like that so I'm working on this purple one we live in a very small community. I think oh, my town itself has 250 people and we, since way back in the late 60s, my town joined up with five other, I think there's five total communities to make one school. And so they went out into the cornfield in the middle of all of the towns and built a school. That's the school that uh, my grandson goes to. That's the same school that my kids went to. So there, uh, you can see over here, right here, I'm trimming off her fingertip just a tiny bit. Not enough that I'm worried about it. Uh, I'm sure I would like to do it and have it better, but it's going to pass. Sorry, I had to take a drink. I've noticed when I'm used to being home all day and not talking to anybody. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I get on to do a video and I talk more and then I end up with chap lips. And I end up with a dry throat. I'm just not used to talking all day. And I can see my camera sagging again. I'm going to fix that. Because you don't want to see. It kind of looks weird to talk to a headless person, doesn't it? And pretty soon I'm going to be headless if I don't lift my camera up. There. Look, you can see all of my head. You can even see the top of my head. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> We're doing pretty good on these. I haven't kept count. I don't know if any of you have, but I can see this pile's growing bigger and this pile's growing smaller. I wouldn't doubt I'm getting towards it. I've had a super busy last few days. I've been finishing a lot of projects and working on a lot of projects and I just love that. I even managed to do some spring cleaning. I didn't get a lot done, but I got enough done that it feels good and it makes me want to do more. I 
clean my laundry room. And if you saw how tiny my laundry room was, you wouldn't think it was a huge accomplishment. But for me, it was a huge accomplishment. That is like, oh, my utility room. Everything gets dumped in there. When I don't know what to do with something, I toss it in there. Uh, when I don't have time to do something, I toss it in there. I bring projects downstairs from up here because I take care of my grandson oh, a couple days a week. And he is only... Well, he's born in September, so I don't know how many months old that makes him. Uh, October, November, December, January, February, March. He'll be six months old, and he sleeps a good portion of the day yet. So when he's here, I have a project downstairs, and I cut it out, or I iron it, or I press it, or um, I might cut shirts apart if I'm going to make a shirt quilt. I do all sorts of little projects like that that I can do downstairs while he sleeps in his crib that's downstairs. But I take down more projects than I can actually do. I have like a big scrap bucket of scraps that I always think I'm gonna get cut up. And so here's this one. And sometimes they get cut up and sometimes they don't. Well, the pro lately, the answer has been that they don't. So I have been taking too many projects down and not doing any of them when they're down there and now the projects have stacked up and yeah <laughs> it's been a little crazy so I took all this the projects back upstairs or found a better home for them downstairs so that they're actually stored away and not just sta stacked up on a pile on my dryer because it was getting to the point that the pile was about this high and I was having to halfway move the pile just to start the dryer <laughs> And that's a fire hazard just even to have all that stuff on top of your dryer. So I cleaned it up. I'm so proud of myself. It was time. Definitely time to get that cleaned up. And I don't know what it is about just accomplishing something little like that. That, I don't know, it maybe took me about two hours to clean up the room. And I went, I have an upper set of cabinets on one side. I have an upper set of cabinets on the other side and then a lower set of cabinets. But the room is only like washer and dryer width. I don't know, six feet. And so it wasn't a lot of cupboards to clean. But man, does that ever make me feel good that I was able to get that done. Sometimes things just stack up and it just doesn't feel good. And that was how... I was starting to feel about my laundry room. The lighting for me here is not the best at all. It's getting dark. It's getting darker outside and it's not uh, very light in here for me, but I don't want to turn on that light because it's not very good for you if I do that. I might sew a couple more blocks and then sign off for the night so I can turn the light on and power through the last blocks. I told myself no cross stitching tonight unless I get those blocks, these blocks all done. So if I'm here a lot longer. I guess I'll just have to be here a lot longer because I for sure want to be able to cross stitch tonight. Okay, where's the other green one? Right here. This would be a great quilt for a uh, Sunday school teacher. A great quilt for a teacher, a great quilt for a grandma. Yeah, I'm really excited about it, and I hope that it does well at the gala. Each class kind of has a different kind of project, and it kind of matters oh, who's in the, what parents are in the class to, who could possibly donate, because obviously if there's a dad who's great at bir building birdhouses... <laughs> He might go in and help the class build some birdhouses as they're 
project. <laughs> We were lucky that there was a couple moms that would help with doing the handprints and that I would do this and yeah, they kind of lucked out. I talked to some of the other kids and found out what some of the other class projects are and so far there could be, but I don't know of anybody, another class that's making a quilt. So that's kind of nice that. There'll probably be not too many quilts there. <coughs> this project is kind of different too. I think a parent might buy this from the... <coughs> from the auction, even if they're not big into quilts, just to have it as a remembrance for their kid. <coughs> What I typically do when I work on blocks that have more than one that have like two sets of pieces kind of like this has the two sides and then the top and bottom is I work on two blocks at a time that's or sometimes I'll work on four blocks at a time which is something I maybe would do if I wasn't on camera because then I could reach all over a little more and spread pieces out a little bit. Being I'm on camera, I want to make sure that I stay within the camera range. Okay, we'll trim this one. And get that one ironed. I very much enjoy watching uh, floss tube. And so most evenings I cross stitch and watch floss tube or watch some other show on TV. And here's Julia's block. And tonight, one of my favorite floss tubers is just put out a new video. So I'm hoping I get to watch that video tonight. And the person that is, is uh, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. And I'll probably watch her tonight. And I'll see if there's anything else on. I've been watching the... Um, I'm not going to remember. The Yellowstone... Prequel, is it 1923? I don't remember the year for sure. Uh, I, I watched the one previous. Uh, I think it was... Maybe 1884, 1883. I don't know what it was for sure. But anyway, I watched the previous one that had, oh, Sam Elliott in it and Faith Hill and Tim McGraw in it. And I just, I love that one. And I've been very much enjoying this one too. Here's well, another one done. That name was Orson. And now I have Tucker and Walker. Tucker's going to get green, and I think Walker's going to get orange. And even when I cut these out, I even have two different shades of orange, and I'm totally okay with that, and I think you won't even notice it in the quilt. And if you do notice it, it's not even going to be a big deal. So it was a super great way to use up some of my small pieces of solid prints. I'm very excited to have those used up. Okay. So now I've been watching the, whatever the newest one is, 1923, I think, with um, Harrison Ford and Helen Marin. And... I think it's easy to relate to too if you grew up on a farm and farmland because I did grow up on a farm and I do understand and attach
attachment to the land. I grew up on a farm in Southern And then I married a farmer. And we moved to Northeast Iowa. And there's really, truly something that, unless you're a farmer, um, it's hard to understand the attachment to land. But I have that attachment to land and understand it. I don't know. I grew up, my grandfather came from Sweden and settled in southern Minnesota. And then he bought a farm there. My dad bought the farm from my grandpa. And I grew up on that. There's just something about having an attachment to the land. I don't know. It's it's a farm thing, and if you farm, you probably understand it. And if you um, live in an apartment and don't own a home, it's probably harder for you to understand. But well, I think the reason I love that show so much is I can appreciate um, Harrison Ford's character as he's so committed to the land. Because that's kind of how I grew up. Okay. Working on an orange block and a green block. Somehow tomorrow, in between everything that's going on, or yet tonight, I have to kind of clean up my house a little bit. The one thing that I don't like about doing foster care is when the people get their dog and their dog is now their dog. They have to come to my house to pick it up. So that means I have to clean up my house. <laughs> and, you know, who wants to clean house when you could be crafting <laughs> or doing something fun or playing with my own dogs or... Yeah, no, I don't want to do that, so... That's what I end up having to do, though, so I just grin and bear it because it's part of the whole process. And trust me, I don't clean the whole house when they come. I, I clean the portion of the house that they'll likely see. That's one thing that I just, I never caught a good bug of is, is being a good house cleaner. I mean, my house is lived in it's not like dirty but it is definitely lived in and when i have so many oh projects on the go it's hard to keep a house super clean or super tidy or home decor looked or i don't know how you want to say that it just my house will always look lived in and that's that's okay with me for the, for the most part okay tucker got his block done that's a little boy i know from town and um, here next up we have Zena, who I think is going to get pink. Seems like there's quite a bit of pink and purple in this one. We'll see. Oh, well, not too much pink. Mostly purple, I think. I had said earlier I'm not too picky about colors and I'm really not and so it just happens that I have, they're turning out pretty good I'm excited about that okay I have three blocks left so I'm going to throw all three into this mix Okay, I wonder how my colors are coming. I want to have a variety of colors, so I'm just kind of looking to see what color would work best. I don't know, I think, I feel like I've done a lot of purple, but maybe I haven't. I'll just do this one purple. Yeah. It seems like there's more girls in this section. And there seem... <laughs> Maybe the class just has more girls than boys. I don't know. There 
there is something about being on camera that, and I've heard other people say it before too, your nose gets itchy. It is the complete and total truth. Because my nose has been itchy ever since I've been starting to talk to you. Okay, I've got one to iron. And remember we just did Tucker and now we have to do Walker and something's wrong with this block. I gotta go back and check it. Huh, okay, this one, I'm just gonna run it through again. The seam is a little off, so it's not a big deal. We can fix that. <laughs> This one. I'm going to be so happy to have these done. We're getting close to the end. If you've been watching my other so with Joe episodes. You probably know that I'm making a quilt for my son-in-law. I managed to get a few more letters done, but not very much further on that. And I'm hoping I can keep going on that later once these blocks are done. But pretty much until I get this quilt done, I'm kind of stuck here and can't move on to another project because these have the stricter deadline. Okay, gotta find the purple pieces and feed this one through. There are so many projects I'd like to do, but it's kind of hard. Uh, I had no idea I would be this busy being a grandma. I like it. I like it a lot. And I'm thankful that I have grandkids. And I keep telling myself that right now is the season and the time that they're little. And uh, this is when their parents need more help. So I want to be there and be able to do that. But wow. <laughs> I, I, I see the kids a lot. And. I love it, but I do love some downtime too. So today is my downtime. And what am I doing on my downtime? Doing something for my grandkids. Oh, it's totally okay. In 10 years from now, I want the kids to still want me around. So in order to be around then, I have to do some things now and that's totally okay. I love that I can take care of um, my one grandson quite regularly and I have another daughter. My oldest daughter Kelly just lives a half an hour away from me and I do childcare for her typically once a week and I'm very thankful I get to do that too. Sadly, my other grandkids live a further enough away that I don't see them quite as much. And I shouldn't complain about that at all. But I probably see them every four to six weeks, which I know some of you are thinking, I only see my grandkids once a year. Just because you live on opposite sides of the country. But we... We see each other some, but just not quite as much do I see that one that lives south of me. We're doing pretty good, guys. Okay. I got Walker's Block fixed. Here's Walker's Block. see what we have next going on here. I think 
we have another one done too. I just got to iron it. I didn't know about adding pink because there's technically not pink in the swirls on the quilt, but I had a couple pink scraps that needed to be used up, so I decided to put just use pink too, and that's good. So here's Xena's. I should call it, well, I always have trouble thinking of a name for a foster dog. And I like to do something different. In fact, at the rescue, they said for a while, they didn't want anyone to name any dogs Annie because they'd had so many dogs named Annie in a row that they didn't, it was hard to keep track of when they went back to look at records over which Annie was Annie. So they kind of told people for a while, you can't use the name Annie. So I try to think of a name that's a little bit different. And my latest dog is Bianca, just because for me, that was a not as a common name that I'm used to hearing. If you have any good dog names that aren't a common name like Annie, I would love it if you'd put them in the comment section below. Like, can you think of, and sometimes I get two dogs at once. So we like to save some names, like if it's two boys, like Bert and Ernie and, and name them two kind of matching names like Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street. So any kind of name combinations or any dog names. So I'm looking for girl dog names. I'm looking for boy dog names. I'm looking for um, a set of names. Like if I had a boy dog and a girl dog, name one Scarlet and one Rat. Um, got another block done. Or if you can think of a name for two boy dogs or two girl dogs because I get any kind of different combination of dogs. Now if you see me over here grabbing some stuff, I don't like to pull this out and then cut my threads. I like to keep feeding something under the machine. So I'm doing what's termed as a leader and ender. So I'm just running this through the machine as kind of a way to end this project without having, or this piece without having a bunch of tail sticking out. Um, I don't know about you, but a lot of times a uh, sewing machine I'm, always, I'm working on might pull the fabric down into the feed dogs. That happens to me sometimes, or sometimes I don't pull the tail out wide enough. And then when the tail's not wide enough, then I have trouble because uh, the machine on threads, all sorts of things like that happen. So I like to do something and have a leader and ender there. I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to show you over time. What I've been doing is I've just been making nine patch blocks and I just do them that way. I have the little pieces sitting over here. So I, now I have this stack of just blue nine patches that are already sewn together. I don't even know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I figure it's the start of a quilt and it didn't, take me really any time. I just fed that through the machine right now and I'll keep that up and eventually I'll come back and do another floss tube and we'll have some kind of project to do with um, blue nine patches. So if you want to make some blue nine patches ahead of time, we'll eventually get to them. Okay. Whoops. This isn't laying in here right. <laughs> I just clip this off and then this will just get thrown over here and now I'm done with this so I'm going to feed another leader and ender through because right now it's ending this project and it's the start of another block so that's nice to have that done so I just have some of these strip sets over here and 
that's what I'm doing with those. And I keep them there, and no matter what I'm sewing on, I just, even when I was sewing binding strips together today, I sewed a couple of those together. Okay. This is my last block. And so can... Okay, and this one's for Josie. And with that, I'm done with my blocks. Um, I do have this other one that I'm going to uh, check out and see what's wrong with that and square that one up a little bit before I finish sewing it. But I am just moments away from being able to go sit on the couch and cross stitch. I'm pretty excited about that. I got to make some supper first, but I have some leftovers from yesterday. So that's awesome. That won't take me long to warm up and eat. And then I can be cross stitching. Yahoo! I'm so excited and I'll be back to this project tomorrow. Um, I'm going to probably add some more clips into this video so that you can see a little bit more about the process of making the quilt. And uh, I thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I'm happy that you were able to do that. Maybe you got some sewing done. Maybe you just sat and listened. Maybe you were a cross stitcher at the time. Um, whatever you were doing, I, I hope it was prosperous and you got something accomplished because that's always my goal get something accomplished. So I am going to say goodbye and I will add on to this video later and um, share more with you about the quilt. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye. Okay. Okay, you hold this side. I'll hold this side. Oh, like that? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's just so hard to see. Okay. Hi guys, I'm back and I'm going to show you the second finished quilt. Um, so this is the quilt with the handprints that I showed, talked to you about earlier. This class happened to have 19 blocks, so it was an odd thing, so I had to add a spacer in here. So anytime I put a new spacer in there, they're, eight, they're cut at 8 and 3 fourths. These sashing strips are 2 and a half by 14 and a half. These are 2 and a half by 2 and a half. And here on the block, these are 12 and a half by 12 and a half. This side pieces here are 12 and a half by one and a half. And these long pieces here on the edge are one and a half by 14 and a half. So I managed to get both of the quilts done. Um, we're gonna flip this around, hopefully without showing you all of my house because it's really a mess. Okay, so close the back up this way. Okay, <laughs> go fast. So um, I needed to, I had a backing that I had gotten from the thrift store and I ended up using extra pieces there and then a strip here and a strip here. And I just did those that six and a half inches wide. We're gonna walk up closer. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but we use variegated thread on the back and it really makes this shine when you can see it in person. But that's what I did with the quilt and that's the handprint quilt I told you about. So there you have it. Thanks for joining me. Bye.